Hello friends, let us continue our discussion on optoelectronic devices. In last few videos, we have discussed about light emitting diode. Today, we will start with semiconductor laser. What is this laser and how it is different from a light emitting diode? After going through this video and the next video, we will be quite clear what is the difference between LED and laser. What is a laser? Laser is a source of highly monochromatic, coherent and directional light. Basically, it is a source of light and that light is monochromatic. That means it is having a single wavelength. It is coherent. Coherent means the wavelengths in the radiation are in phase. Further, it is highly directional in nature. So, laser is producing light which is highly monochromatic coherent and directional this laser is an acronym which stands for l is light l is amplification by s is stimulated e is emission of and r stands for radiation so laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation here this last three terms they tells about the principle of operation of laser a laser works on the principle of stimulated emission of radiation let us now look into types of laser there are different ways for classification of laser but the one which i am going to discuss in this lecture is it is based on the state of matter of the active medium. What is this active medium over here? Active medium means where the lasing action takes place inside the laser. According to state of matter of the active medium, the first one is solid state laser where the active medium is in the form of solid. Ruby laser is an example of solid state laser. Second one is liquid state laser where the matter of the active medium is in the form of liquid. Dye laser is a special kind of liquid state laser. The third one is gas laser where the laser medium or the active medium is in the form of gas. Here helium neon laser is a gas laser. Apart from these three, there is some special kind of lasers. One is fiber laser where the active medium is optical fiber. And another one is semiconductor laser where the active medium is a semiconductor. And we will be focusing on this semiconductor laser under this unit. Further, we will be discussing about these lasers in the next unit of your syllabus. The semiconductor laser is a laser which is made up of a special kind of p-n junction diode. So sometimes it is also called as laser diode. So it is basically a p-n junction diode. Okay. Further the semiconductor laser is of two types. One is homo junction and the second one is heterojunction. What is the meaning of this Homo junction and heterojunction. Homo junction is the semiconductor laser in which both P side and N side are made up of same kind of material. And heterojunction is the semiconductor laser in which this P side and N side are made up of different kind of material. Further, depending on the number of layers in the heterojunction semiconductor laser, it is again classified into two types. One is single heterojunction and the second one is double heterojunction. Let me tell you a brief about the intention of laser. The theory behind the laser working is given by Einstein in the year 1917 and that 
principle based on which the laser operates that is nothing but stimulated emission of radiation. Once the theory was proposed by Einstein, many scientists they tried to develop different optoelectronic devices based on that principle. First they developed MASER and after that in the year 1960, the first working laser was built by T.H. Mainman in California and this laser what he developed that is a ruby laser. After two years in the year 1962, Robert Neil Hall, he demonstrated the first semiconductor laser. Let us now understand some of the terminologies which are very much important to understand the laser operation. First, we will look into electron transition. You all know that electron may transit from lower energy state to higher energy state or higher to lower energy state and that is known as electron transition and while it is transiting from one level to other, there is either absorption of energy or emission of energy. Based on that, the electron transition occurs either due to absorption of energy or due to emission of energy. The absorption of energy takes place when an electron transit from a lower energy state to higher energy state. Whereas emission takes place when an electron transit from a higher energy state to lower energy state. Right? Further, this emission is of two types. One is spontaneous emission and the second one is stimulated emission. We will discuss about these three things in detail. Okay. In the last two lectures, we have discussed about light emitting diode, which is an optoelectronic device. And now we are going to discuss about laser, which is again an optoelectronic device. But the difference between these two is that the light emitting diode that operates on the principle of spontaneous emission, whereas Laser operates on the principle of stimulated emission. So this is the difference in their operation. There are some other differences as well which we will be discussing in further classes. Let us now understand the electron transitions in more detail. For that I will be considering two states one at energy E1 and second one at energy E2. And here E2 is greater than E1 that means this is at a higher energy state and this is a lower energy state. First we will look into the electron transition where absorption takes place. So in case of absorption the electron is moving from lower energy to higher energy state right. So here the electron is at lower energy state E1 and if this electron gets some energy which is equal to or more than this difference that is E2 minus E1 then this will move to E2 right. So if it is move, getting some energy H nu where H nu is equals to E2 minus E1 then this electron will move to energy state E2 and during this process it absorbs the energy. So electron moves to higher energy level through absorption of energy. Now coming to the second one that is spontaneous emission for this I am also considering again the two energy states E1 and E2 and here as it is emission the electron moves from higher energy state to lower energy state. So the electron is initially is at energy state E2. Now Generally, we know that the electrons, they always try to be at the minimum energy state. Whenever they are excited, they will go to some higher energy state and they will stay there for some time and after that, they will automatically come back to the lower energy state. And that is what spontaneous emission. And the time for which they will stay at a higher excited state that is known as mean decay time. 
so after that time it will automatically come back to the lower energy state and during this transition it will emit some energy h nu which is again equals to e2 minus e1 so the spontaneous process is electron moves to lower energy level through emission of energy right now we'll look into the second type of emission that is stimulated emission here also the electron is at the higher energy state but the difference between these two is that here the electron was staying here up to the time interval which is equals to the mean decay time after that it comes by its own to the lower energy state but here what happens before the time or before that mean decay time if some external energy stimulates or trigger the electron then it may come down to the lower energy state before the mean decay time after the mean decay time it will come automatically but if before de mean decay time it is triggered by some external energy then it will it may come down to the lower energy state so if some incident energy h nu triggers this electron it will come down to the lower energy state and while it is coming down it will emit some energy which is equals to h nu right now we are having two radiation one this h nu which was emitted by the electron during the process in which it is coming from energy state e2 to e1 and this is the incident one so this incident one will also move with the emitted one and both of these two radiations they are in phase with each other similarly if some other radiation will hit one more electron two three four electrons then if it is stimulating one electron we are getting two radiations if this two will hit two more electrons then we will be getting four radiations and the process will continue and we will be getting high intensity of the output so this stimulated emission is the process in which the transition is initiated by the incoming radiation and the emitted light is in phase with the incident light both are in phase hope you understand the, the difference between these two this is the principle for led and this is the working principle of laser in general within a material all the three processes they occur simultaneously but for lasing action to occur the stimulated emission dominates spontaneous emission and absorption so this is the dominating process in case of a laser today we will stop here in the next class we will be discussing about some of the important concepts which explains how the intensity of the light increases in case of a laser Thank you all if you like the content please press the like button and share the link with your friends further don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you all